concussion is a sudden loss of consciousness caused by a, a traumatic injury to the brain that can last for a few seconds or, or a few days or even longer in some cases. People recover and they recover spontaneously. What we don't know though is whether they fully recover all the way to normal. And of course there's tremendous variation there. Many people recover fast, other people take a long time. And whether it's actually complete is uncertain. For a long time we've known that major head injuries can cause lasting deficits in, in professional athletes as well as military veterans. What's, what our group wondered about was whether minor concussions acquired in community settings might also have long-term adverse effects. For a long time these extreme cases have gotten a lot of attention and a lot of controversy, whereas the vast majority of individuals are not professional athletes, are, are not uh, uh, military veterans, and that are awfully prone to all sorts of injuries as a part of everyday life, both related to employment as well as, as, as related to recreation. Okay, so we looked at every adult in Ontario diagnosed with a concussion over the last 20 years. So that amounts to a sample size of about a quarter of a million people. It's an extraordinarily common event. And then we follow up it on, on individuals over time in order to take a look at how they, they are doing years after the fact, and in particular, how many subsequently died of suicide as, as determined by a coroner's reports. So our main finding from the cohort of about a quarter million patients is that over 600 of them subsequently died from suicide. It's an extraordinarily high number. You know, uh, uh, more than three times what, what would be expected from population norms. The average age of death was about 44 years of age. There was a widespread there. Some young people, some old people. The, the typical time delay between the concussion and subsequent suicide was about seven years. So it, it doesn't occur immediately. It's as if their life begins to slowly unravel. Not in the next few months. Everybody's on their toes and still hopeful for, for recovery. It's years and years later. You know, our novel findings from our research wasn't just the fact of a concussion, but it was the circumstances of a concussion. We found that the average concussion increased the subsequent risk of suicide by a factor of three, but concussions acquired on weekend activities seem to be distinctly more risky and associated with about a fourfold increase in the long-term risk of suicide. Quite intriguing and open to multiple different interpretations. For each person who died from suicide, we then uh, uh, tracked backwards in time, asking how recently had they seen a physician. And we found that about half of the patients had visited the doctor in, a, in, in their last week of life. And almost all of them had seen a physician in the last month of life, suggesting that there was a great big opportunity for, for prevention, because nobody needs to die from suicide. A physician may not be able to normalize things completely, but can certainly stop a bad situation from getting worse. It's important not to misinterpret our research, all right? We found that the subsequent risk of suicide was about 32 per 100,000 per year. That's not a 32% chance of suicide. That's 32 per 100,000 per year. Uh, the most important implication is for prevention, i.e. avoid a concussion if at all possible. Wear a helmet if you are playing football. Use your seatbelt whenever you are driving. Don't, don't do any physical activity when you're intoxicated with alcohol.
get trained and uh, keep your wits about you. Avoid reckless activity. I'm not a fan of base jumping, for example. 